Well, Happy New Year, everybody. It's our first episode of 2023. Um, hope you all stayed safe out there. Hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and holiday season. Um, we're well past it now. We're into the <laughs> new year. We're ready. New year, new us. Not really. Sorry. No, not really. Throwing beer, can, <laughs> throw beer cans now. Um, <laughs> so... That should tell you no new me here. So, um, of course, before we get going with our show, we do have to pay homage to uh, Pele. Of course, Pele passed away this week at the age of 82 after a year-long battle with cancer. Of course, for those who don't know, Pele is the only um, soccer player to win three World Cups. He is also um, very... He was a big part of the growth in the u.s in terms of soccer so pele of course i may not like soccer but pele did a lot for the sport um you know did a lot for um you know brazil obviously so rest in peace to pele um he's a legend and it just was only fitting of course last week we just lost franco harris now pele um, so needless to say, 2022 did not end on a good note. No, and especially in like soccer and football worlds, football and football did not end well. So I hope I pronounced it right. Um, but anyway, going forward now coming up on the show, we're going to, do, um, or we're going to talk some NFL news, including a big retirement announcement that came up earlier this week. Um, of course, we also are going to talk about the ratings war that we saw on sun last Sunday between the NBA and the um, the NBA and the NFL. Um, and of course, we will have our Week 17 picks. No more Thursday night football, so we do not have a Thursday pick, but we will have our Week 17 picks as we get going. And Jason, I'll let you take it from here. Yeah, in a in a game. That, well, the first half just, you know, you looked at the, you know, the Buffalo Bills in that first half against the Bears, and you're like, really? To the Bears? And then they just come out after halftime, get the ball, and then just score 29 points in the second half. Uh, and my mind is blown because we, we outscore Chicago – um, twenty nine to three in the second half, but then Chicago outscored us ten to six in the first half. And the thing is, like, how the hell? But I'm not questioning it. Um, Josh Allen didn't really have the best game in the world, but it was enough to get us a win. Uh, the ground game actually was what helped the offense you know, score points and get the victory there. Uh, Josh Allen had three total touchdowns, um, two in the air and then one rushing. And then we also had two touchdowns by um, the running backs, uh, one by Cook and one by Singletary. So for, for Bears, it didn't look very promising for the run game. So, but... Good thing for the Bills, they they do win. They they get a good win here against Chicago, but it's gonna be tough moving forward if they want that number one seed. You know, of course we'll talk about it later, but they gotta get through Cincinnati. You gotta get through New England. I mean, since he'll be the biggest challenge out of the two of them, um, so agree. this week will be crucial. Of course, we'll have our picks a little bit later. Um, so that, that moves me into my second takeaway. Um, we, t I've talked about Luka Doncic on this show before, but this season is just magical for multiple reasons, including, uh, Tuesday night's performance for Luka Doncic, who, um, is the first player to have a 60 point, um, triple double, but 
in a, in a way that it was 60 points, 21 rebounds, and 10 assists. Never has been done in the NBA until Tuesday night. You know, a 60-point triple-double has happened, but not with 20 re- rebounds. And you look at Luka Doncic, who even afterwards um, against the Houston Rockets only had 35 points, 12 rebounds, and and like or 13 rebounds and, and 10 assists. Even on an off night, after scoring 60, that would be a regular night for any other player. Like, that would be a, a, a huge game for anybody else. And then, if you look at Luka, that's just another day in the office. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he, he's in the MVP running. Um, ultimately, if I had it my way, I think he would be my almost unanimous MVP because he's just having that kind of season. Um, if he can stay healthy and keep this up, I, I think that the Mavericks can be a scary team heading into the playoffs who have finally got it turned around. They're mm-hmm. currently on a five-game win streak. Um, you know, Christian Wood is kind of, you know, is now in a starting center role. And and I'm thinking this through is like, well, he should have been starting from the get-go because he is that kind of player. And to my knowledge, from what I'm seeing now, Christian Wood is the kind of player that what Christoph Porzingis could have been in Dallas if he only stayed healthy. But as far as Luka Doncic, he is is amazing to me. Um, through through five years, I almost think that he's already looking better than Dirk Nowitzki in twenty one years. Or in, I think 20, 20, 21 years um, with the Mavericks. So, and what's what's unfortunate about Luca right now is he's flying under the radar because you know there's still Steph Curry, there's still LeBron, there's still KD. Um, right. So you know he's doing a lot better than those three, but you know again because those three have been great for a long time, they're going to get the media attention. And, you know, going to get the MVP votes because they're, you know, essentially the the guys who've led the way for the last 10, 15 years plus. Right. Actually, the Kia MVP ladder does not even have uh, Steph Curry or LeBron James, which, by the way, Steph Curry is currently hurt. I think it's like an elbow injury. Um, and... The Lakers are currently dealing with injuries. They, you know, Anthony Davis is out. Um, mm-hmm. So, but well, what Luka, else is new with Anthony Davis? Let's be fair. Yeah, yeah, no, he's he's injury prone just about at this point. But um, he gets. I won't he, talk he the same thing with is be... out with a paper cut. So let's just <laughs> that right. Yeah. But uh, congrats, Luca. Just keep up the great season. Because if you if you can keep it up and, and be a menace, you know there, there's there's no slowing down for this kid at all, and I I, I love it. You know, mm-hmm. I w- I wish I was able to see like just about most of Dirk's career because I'm sure he had these kind of like you know seasons and and games, but never to the point where I don't think ever in. Dirk's career has he ever averaged over 30 points a game. So that's why I say, I, I, you know, every year Luca improves. And I figured it was only a matter of time before he really takes over the NBA. So who knows? Um, hmm. But a situation in the NBA that we do not like to see or talk about, but we are going to talk about um, is. Between the Detroit Pistons and the Orlando Magic the other night. Um, so, Mo Wagner is dribbling the ball down to court. Um, Killian, Dane is try- or Killian Hayes is trying to, um, I want to say, steal the ball. Mo Wagner kind of pushes him right to his bench. Which, you know, because there's a whole big old, you know, 
gathering and and, and um, benches kind of at each other's necks. Um, but afterwards, Killian Hayes gets up after getting pushed into the bench, and then elbows Mo Wagner in the back of the head. Mo Wagner's out into the Detroit bench, looking like he's you know knocked unconscious. And, well, it's been stated that both players have um, been suspended multiple games. Um, Killian, I think Mo Wagner is two games. Killian Hayes is three. Um, you look at that, is that justified? Multiple game suspension should have been longer. And um, why did it, should it have even gone to this level of you know, a man elbowing another player in the back of the head. I, I mean, push a player all you want, but I don't think you have the right to just go out well, and, and elbow another grown-ass man, another NBA player, in the back of the head for no reason. See, like, that's just... You could have just, you know... That's, that's a move to save for fighting sports, not, you know basketball not even hockey and i you know right. hockey is a sport where there's fighting but this is more a boxing or an mma type move where you just go for the kill well i mean then, it's even still in cheap. mma or like any kind of like boxing you wouldn't be allowed to do something like that you do that you probably get disqualified right yeah. off the off the spot frankly things like that i'm sorry you you know you deserve to face charges, not even just a two-game suspension. That's straight assault. Like, if you're just going to go for the kill, you should honestly be, you know, behind bars, not just two games suspended, slap on the wrist. Right. Um, personally, I, I think that he should have been suspended at least, like, ten games and then, like, fined heavily, like, Maybe like I don't know, fifty thousand dollars. Find like fifty thousand dollars and suspended like ten games or so. I th I think that would have been a little bit better than saying, "Oh, here's three game suspension. Just don't do it again." Mm -hmm. Like, what's that going to teach the player at the end of the day? I mean, oh, cool, he can't join a team for three games. Can't even practice for three games. And then all of a sudden, oh, he's going to be back after three games and act like, you know, it never happened in the first place? Like, come on now. See, like, I don't know. I mean, I this is right up there. And I mean, Grayson Allen, let's go back to him because we talked a lot about him last year. Um, right. Grayson, Grayson Allen, of course, he's famous for tripping players, you know, dirty, you know, trips and all that. But... To me, on a scale, you know, like, if you look at that and you look at what, um, Killian Hayes, you know, what happened between Killian Hayes and Mo Wagner, um, Killian Hayes, what he did is by far worse than anything Grayson Allen's done. So, I agree. it deserves more than a three game suspension. And like I said, it probably deserves charges as well for just knocking the guy out. Like, you know, boxing, it's different, you know. Same with uh, any combat sport, really. It's different there. It's not, you know, it's it's dirty. It's a cheap hit in those. But, you know, sometimes those hits are expected. Right. I mean, personally, I, I'm not too sure. Um, but. I mean, I was going to say, like, speaking of Grayson Allen, I mean, I, there's like. Like, during the Bulls-Bucks game just, like, recently, um, he kind of got, you know, um, got shoved into um, DeMar DeRozan, and then DeMar DeRozan kind of, like, got all into his face. But I feel like him getting, like, it was a Bulls player that pushed him into DeMar DeRozan, and DeMar DeRozan's like, Oh well, because of his track record, I'm you know that that that's not right. But 
like he he's not like he intentionally did it. He got pushed into mm-hmm. the martyrism. <laughs> yeah. But this one yeah. is not like this one is like well, Mo Wagner like is not any more you know um um innocent than Killian Hayes. But what Killian Hayes did is a lot more you know. Guilty than what Mo Wagner did. Mm. Mo Wagner, yeah, he pushed him into the bench, which he probably shouldn't have done, because that could, you know, hurt a player. But Killian Hayes kind of took a step above. All he had to do is just, you know, walk away from the situation, and then he wouldn't have gotten suspended. If anything, the only player that would have gotten suspended was Mo Wagner right there. But now that you go, you get up and you're just like attack the man from the back of the head and kind of knock him unconscious, yeah, you you get what you get and you get what you got, you know, coming to you and what you deserved was, you know, a multiple game suspension and it should be a fine and, yeah, maybe there should be charges against him too, but, I mean, it's the NBA and nothing like that's ever going to really mm-hmm. truly happen unless, like, somehow, like, I don't know, just something worse than that, I guess. I don't know. Yep. Exactly. Um, but for Mo Wagner, it's not really a suspension if he's in the concussion protocol. Is it, has it been confirmed that he's in concussion protocol after that? I don't know, but I'd imagine he is, considering he got knocked out after a hit to the back of the head. Oh, probably. Who knows? Mm. All right, well... um. I'm going to send it over your way as I'm done with my takeaways. So, speaking of pressing charges, can we press charges on Jeff Saturday for impersonating an NFL coach? (laughs) Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, So, the Chargers were partying like it's 2018 because we are going to the postseason, baby. That's right. Our first play, the Chargers, their first playoff berth since 2018. A 20-3 victory versus the Colts should have been a bigger gap, but, you know, um, is what it is. Um, Of course, you know, Justin Herbert wasn't exactly flashy. It mostly was done through Austin Eckler on uh, Monday night. Um, And Nick Foles... I would say most of the season has been through Austin Eckler, because doesn't he have, like, 16 touchdowns on the year? Yeah, something like that. But, you know, he's not a pro bowler, so straight yeah, disrespect right that's there. That's a joke anyway, so let's not even I mean, go we talked about that. that last week anyway. But, um, so, of course, right now the Chargers are the sixth seed, if you've paid attention to how the standings shape up. So, Cincinnati and Baltimore are both in. However, we don't know exactly where they will be because the division is still up for grabs for Baltimore and, of course, Cincy. And then, of course, the seven seed is not locked up either. That is between the Dolphins, Jets, um, Patriots. Patriots. You know, essentially those three teams are the big ones in the running. Still in it. What's that? The Steelers, too. Are and the Steelers. Like, oh, I mean, yeah. Tennessee, I guess you could say, is out, I believe, after uh, Thursday night. Uh, technically, they are not because... Mm-hmm. If yeah, they're they still battling Jackson- for the division. The last week, yeah. Jacksonville and Tennessee, who are playing each other week 18. Mm-hmm. That are, game will get uh, flexed to Sunday night. I could bet you that no, right now. Will. Um, it'll either get flexed to Sunday night or, or it'll get flexed to, uh, Saturday afternoon is what I think is going to end up happening. Um, but, you know, Luckily essentially Joshua Dobbs and, uh, and Trevor Lawrence facing yeah. off or battling each other. But, um, but that's where things shape up right now. And of course, if you look at the playoff bracket, if things were to start today, um, the Chiefs would play the Dolphins in the first round, and the Chargers would play the Bengals. 
doesn't seem like a very promising so, uh, situation for the Chargers. Nothing against the Chargers, but... No, no. Uh, I will agree with you. It doesn't look promising because of how hot the, the Bengals have been. However, the Bengals cooled off really last week. They didn't look like, you know, the Cincinnati team that's been, like, steamrolling the NFL the last few weeks and beat the Chiefs. They struggled against Kansas City. Or, I'm sorry, they struggled against New England. So, Yeah, it didn't take a toll, like, later in the game where Cincinnati finally turned it around and got the win. Now, now what I'm going to say is this. Um... The Chargers, now if I had to put them, now here's the thing, in terms of are they a threat, a pretender, an underdog, I don't think they're the first two. What I think they are is the underdog, and I think they're kind of between that and the pretender because, again, you can't, you know, all the injuries that happened, you know, you could either judge them on or don't. Um, the fact that they got here with all those injuries and Justin Herbert kind of playing, you know, let's face it, Justin Herbert didn't necessarily take the big leap that we would have expected in year three. Um, right. He didn't really, you know, it's not like he regressed, but he's not playing, you know, he's not playing you know, top five football right now. And essentially, this was a big discussion at my Christmas party that I went to, um, my family Christmas party, is, you know, the big debate was Justin Herbert sucks, which is not true, um, and I won't admit to it, not just because I'm a Chargers fan, but also because, you know, he's still putting up record numbers for his first three years in the league. Right. So, basically what I think I got everyone to agree on at that party is if you rank, if you had to rank Justin Herbert between Tom Brady, greatest of all time, and Zach Wilson, the worst starter in the league entering, you know, this season, I'd have to go back and say he's Detroit Matt Stafford. Okay, now notice I didn't say Rams Matt Stafford that won the championship and has Cooper Cup. Um, he was Detroit, he's Detroit Matt Stafford right now, where he's a threat, you know, he flies under the radar because, you know, he hasn't made a playoff run. Frankly, he could be one and done for all we know. Then he'd really fit the Matt Stafford description. Especially with Detroit, yeah. Okay. Um, to be honest with you, I mean, it, it, they they could be a pretender, but then again, with getting Joey Bosa back um, from injury, first game since September yeah. for Joey Bosa, I mean, if you yeah. can stay healthy the rest of the year, I, I would say that maybe that mm -hmm. defense can definitely help them be a threat, but I gotta see more out of the Chargers before I can call them a threat. I, I just think that they're a pretender and also an underdog because you, you just don't know what kind of Chargers team you're gonna get for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how well this team's gonna perform in the playoffs because most of those players that's on that team, maybe minus Keenan Allen, haven't really played in the playoffs before. Mm -hmm. I believe Mike Williams did the last run. So, you know, Mike Williams has been there. Um, shit. You know, Keenan Allen's been there multiple times. And, you know, I believe Joey Bosa's been there as well. Now, here's the thing. Because the last time the Chargers were in the playoffs, they advanced past the first round, and then they got obliterated by New England in the second round. And I mean straight up obliterated. Okay. It was an uncharger like game 
from every aspect of it because even when the Chargers lose, they usually lose in one possession, you know, maybe 10 points max. Right. So, you know, I do believe the Chargers can win a game. You know, here's why. Because in years past, they've done pretty well against Cincy. They seem to always match up well with Cincy. Um, and then, let's face it, if, you know, we drop the last two games and say, you know, we drop to the seven seed and we have to play Kansas City, which is more than likely what it would be, you know, if things ended today, I think we could take Kansas City, honestly. I mean, because you look at the two games that we played Kansas City, the refs were a big reason why we lost, um, but, you know, Travis Kelsey was the other part of it. But besides Travis Kelsey and besides the bullshit calls that we faced, we beat the Chiefs in every category minus the score. Right. So I really think we could take it to Kansas City in the first round. Now, I'm not saying it's a guarantee I'm not going to go out there and, you know, run my mouth and say, it's guaranteed we're going to win the first round, like, you know. But I would say, though, they're not going to go down without a fight. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't even put them in that pretender category, you know, per se. But I would say it's a good start. And again, you know, it's not good enough for me because of all the cap money we spent, but it's still, you know stepping stones and i guess you gotta just take it we should have been battling the chiefs but i digress um so i gotta switch it up real quick we're gonna take a quick break from the nfl um to talk about college football and of course syracuse played in the pinstri the bad boy mowers pinstripe bowl on wednesday on thursday afternoon i got my days all messed up thanks to christmas um, <laughs> so Syracuse, of course, in the past has done pretty well in the pinstripe bowl. They have a good record going into Yankee stadium and, you know, they've won a couple of them. This one got ugly, um, but they managed to keep it within one score. But unfortunately, Minnesota comes away. The golden Gophers win 28 to 20 in the pinstripe bowl. Of course, Sean Tucker, um, did not play in the game. Sean Tucker has declared for the NFL draft and chose to sit out. So, for those who don't know, Sean Tucker's the running back for Syracuse. He's been in the Heisman discussion the last few years. Um, he's third all-time in rushing yards at Syracuse University, which is big because, of course, Ernie Davis and a few, you know, you know um, but Ernie Davis being the big name there. Um, and, you know, Justin Tucker, I imagine he will, or I'm sorry, and um, Tucker, I imagine, will be a th second or third round pick. He'll be a valuable pickup for any team looking for a change of pace back. Um, but nonetheless, I guess it was a good year for Syracuse. I mean, for a season that looked a little promising, then all of a sudden they just, you know, lost games. And for a little bit of time there, they were actually ranked. Yeah. Of course, um, I actually just looked up the rushing yards. Um, of course, Tucker, Sean Tucker, he is now going to be Number three on that all-time list, I believe, in rushing yards behind Jim, or, yeah, he'll be behind Jim Morris, uh, Walter Reyes, and he just passed Alone Carter. Um, of course, other names on that list. He is actually going to be ahead of Larry Zonka as well. Um, so that's big, ahead of Floyd Little, um... And actually, Ernie Davis is not on this list, which is shocking. So, 
Um, but nonetheless, good run. And Jim Brown's not even on this list. That's another shocking one. Hmm. So, all right. I guess I don't know as much about Syracuse football as I thought. So let's go on to the third takeaway before I embarrass the crap out of myself. <laughs> um, well, in an unlikely turn of events, it would appear that the Raiders are prepared to move on from Derek Carr. Um, Derek Carr was benched on Wednesday in favor of Jarrett Stidham, but it doesn't just go as far as that. Derek Carr will now be the third string quarterback for the Raiders the last two weeks. Um, That's great. And can I just say I told you so? Because I've been saying for years since Derek Carr came in the league, I've been saying for all these years, Derek Carr is not a franchise quarterback. And this just validates my point. Okay. So, I told you so, Raider Nation. Just remember that. I've told you so that Derek Carr is an overrated quarterback. He's no longer the fifth best quarterback in the division. He's fourth. Okay. It's clearly Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Chad Henney, then Derek Carr and Russell Wilson. So, congratulations, Derek Carr. You moved above Russell Wilson, but you got the benching. And to add to that, Derek Carr is so upset about being benched, he is no longer entering the Raiders' facility. Yep, he, he, he's basically, like, quit on the Raiders. He's not going to yep. join them. He's not going to practice or anything like that. He has totally walked away from the Raiders. And, um... Seems like Devontae Adams might just be the next player that might leave the Raiders because he's not happy about the benching of his best friend, Derek Carr. It was the main reason why he decided to come to Las Vegas in the first yeah. place. It, and it would appear that the Raiders are going to continue this forever rebuild that they're on um, because they're not only going to lose Derek Carr and potentially Devontae Adams. But now, um, Josh Jacobs' latest um, social media posts hint that Josh Jacobs might be on the way out at the end of the year. So, so if you look at that, that's three potential... I wouldn't say, like, I mean, maybe not Derek Carr, but, th you know, two potential top free agents... Hmm. And coming into this offseason, you know, Josh Jacobs, who's had probably his best career year this season, hmm. Devontae Adams, you know, leading the league in touchdowns for wide receivers, and and then Derek Carr, I mean, yeah, he doesn't look like the, flash, the most flashy guy, but I still think that he might get picked up by a team. So, now ultimately, I, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, now they're not going to be stupid and just dump him. What they're probably going to do is trade him. And, you know, Derek Carr does have a decent-sized contract. So, um, but the Raiders, it won't hurt them tremendously. I mean, they do have $34 million in cap space going into the soft season. I think I read something that, I don't know if it's Carr, I, that the with Carr, who did, I think, sign an extension... I think it was Carr or something like that. Um, if they were say were to release him, they would save thirty million dollars on the cap. So mm -hmm. it could just happen where he gets released and then they just bite the bullet and mm -hmm. now. Believe it or not, the top five teams right now in cap space. And it's not even close because the Chicago Bears have double the cap space of any team going into this offseason. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if you're Chicago and you see that Derek Carr is going to be on the market, do you maybe consider 
picking him up, you know, because let's face it, Justin Fields, he hasn't quite lived up to the hype. And as expected by me, again, um, you know, but then you've got the Giants who are going to be looking. I mean, let's face it, the Giants need a quarterback because Daniel Jones isn't the answer there. Um, you know, the Atlanta Falcons, they've kind of got their quarterback I, situation. Uh, they may or may not. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think Desmond Ritter is, you know, going to be that guy for Atlanta. So they, they might need a quarterback. I'm thinking Carolina's going to need a quarterback. Um, Carolina's, let's see, Carolina doesn't have the cap space, though, last I checked. Carolina has $1.8 in cap space going into this offseason, so it's not an ideal and, situation for them. Of the right. teams with cap space that really need a quarterback, Indianapolis has 28.3 mil. Um, you know, Washington yeah, has 20 and a half. I think it's going to be a walk away with Ryan. Um, it wouldn't shock me if Derek Carr ends up in Indianapolis, but I mean, the Jets. I just don't know. If it's, the Jets. Yeah, they have sixteen mil. Um, they have sixteen mil. The Jets have sixteen mil, and the big thing to factor in is the Jets have all the pieces there right now. Okay, Brees Hall in the backfield. They've got two stunning wide receivers. Mm-hmm. And on top of it, they've got a re they got a guy who's going to be the best cornerback in football in a few years oh, at this yeah. trajectory. You know, sorry, sorry, Jason, it's the truth. Like he's going to be one of the great, you know, corners in this league in a few years. Um, but again, I but I look at the top ten in terms of cap space, and frankly, you know, the only teams that make sense to me. You know, the New York Giants, um, I think, make a lot of sense to me because, let's face it, Daniel Jones, I don't trust his arm, and I don't know if um, Brian Dable will. Um, and then the other option... I was going to think is, the Commanders would be a team that might need a quarterback, too. Yeah. The other option is number seven. Now, keep in mind, Derek Carr's brother played for this team the Houston oh, Texans. Oh, he something. played for the Giants too. So, again, you know, could he go where his brother played? Although he'd be entering a dumpster fire there. Oh, if the money's if the money's right, I mean, why not? I mean, I look at it this way: Houston is not. Like, I, mm -hmm. uh, like, yeah, they only won two games, but they're not, like, the, you know, the worst, I guess, team in the world. Mm -hmm. Because they still, even with a bunch of those losses, they were still able to keep it up with, with players. Yeah. I mean, cool. you still have Brandon Cooks, who is, you know, one of the top, a very underrated receiver who I think could pair up really well with, you know, a quarterback like Derek Carr or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, you have, you know, Damian Pierce, who is having himself a rookie, you know, a great He's rookie campaign. Really though. I know, but still, he was, even when he was out there, yeah. I mean, he was still doing very well. And I, and, um, I, and I said this about the Texans at the beginning of the year. It's bad. They're a bad team. They're a really bad team, but it's not all doom and gloom because there's pieces there that certainly, you know, bode well for their future. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure that they're going to get the number one pick, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that they're probably going to use that for a quarterback yeah. anyway, so, unless they traded it away. Mm -hmm. I mean... And the other curveball... And I just thought of this, the Steelers. Dare I yeah, throw the Steelers in that mix? I, I think the Steelers might be one of those teams that could be in the in the search for a quarterback because 
you know, Mitchell Drabisky only signed a one-year deal, so he's going to be gone after this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have Kenny Pickett, and he hasn't really proved himself. I mean, and you Pickett, have Mason Rudolph, too. So Pickett can only go up from here. That's about the best I can say about it. Um, but it hasn't been exactly a stellar, you know, rookie campaign. Right. So, but with that, I'd say it's a good place to leave off. We'll take our break. When we come back, we'll discuss the player retirement. We'll also talk the ratings war, and we'll have our picks coming up in just a moment here on Sunday Morning Tinkle. Well, um, this was a retirement I don't think many saw coming. Um, but I guess you could say you saw it coming. J.J. Watt has announced his retirement from the NFL. Um, he announced it in a tweet with a photo of his son or his new child and his wife, um, saying that it was his last home game of his NFL career, um, and that he wants to spend more time with his family, of course, you know, J.J. Watt the last few years has battled a lot of injuries. <clears throat> um, you know, his last few years in Houston were battered with them. Um, and, of course, J.J. Watt's only 33 years old. But he's got 107 and a half sacks. He's 38th all time on that list. 514 tackles. And, mind you, one of those seasons in Houston, he almost broke Michael Strahan's sack record. Yeah, because he had 20 and a half sacks. Yeah, so... Like a couple different times, too. So that said, of course, 38th all time. Um, does this put him first ballot? I would say so. I mean, of all the times he's been the defensive player of the year, and he's a multiple time winner, too, so I would say so. Awards, yes. Numbers might dictate, you know, a second-year ballot, but I would say I agree he should be. If it went on the person and the character that he is, he should be first ballot because he's Class A, you know. I don't think there's anybody between, you know, the people in the league and, you know, people that watch the game that don't like J.J. Watt. I think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that doesn't like him. So, um, that said, you know, I think he'll be first ballot, but I think the next big question, and of course, you know, I like to poke the bear. So I got to ask the question here, will he join the Texans on a one day contract to retire a Houston Texan? Oh, I think so, because that's where he had his most success, was it, with the Texans. Mm. I mean, I mean, yeah, he was with the Cardinals for like a couple of years, but that, you know, if you look at his whole entire career, the years that he had the most success was, was you know, the Houston Texans. So I think that he's going to retire a Texan, um, not with the Cardinals, but it'd be interesting if, you know, Houston and Arizona ever retire his number when it you know ever comes down to it. There's there's no denying Houston has to retire his number, um, but I will say he should retire Texan not just for everything he's accomplished in Houston, but everything he's done off the field. I mean he's done so much for the Houston communities. Um, of course, you remember that hurricane a few years ago. Um, I believe it was <laughs> 2017. They got you know, hit bad with that hurricane. So you kind of got to, you know, if Arizona can, they should do the right thing. Let him retire a Houston Texan. So, um, but that's my thoughts there. I get, you know, his career kind of resurged in Arizona, but let's give him that at the very least. Um, we got to go on to this a ratings war. Now, keep in mind, over the summer, um, I was very dramatic, I guess you could say, saying once the schedule got released, I had said, well, the NBA has won Christmas. 
And for those who don't know, the NBA is a Christmas league, okay? You know, football's got Thanksgiving, basketball is Christmas. I think there's going to be some rethinking now with those new TV deals and with, you know, the ratings and how things went because the NBA got destroyed in the ratings on Christmas Day. The NFL as a whole, raked in 20-plus million viewers to the NBA's 4 million views. So, That's I, insane. I think you can now say, sorry, NBA, Christmas belongs to ba- uh, football as well. Well... Usually, there's a lot more people that watch football compared to basketball anyway. And and it's not even just, like, when it's Christmas Day. Like, if you look at, like, viewership between the Super Bowl and the NBA Finals, Super Bowl is always going to be the most viewed thing over the NBA Finals all the time. So, it, it doesn't shock me that, you know, Christmas Day is the most you know, for NFL is more viewed than NBA because that's usually how that always goes anyway. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I, I think, I'm a very big corporate of both. I mean, I watched Packers, Dolphins, and then I was watching the ending of the Mavs-Lakers mm-hmm. game on NBA. So I guess I'm, uh, you know, somebody that was part of the 20-plus and 4-plus million for both. So, hey. See, People who watch the show know my views on the NBA, so I don't think I need to dive into it. But I mm-hmm. will say, what's not shocking is that the NFL won the rating war. What's shocking is the deficit that they won by. I know I that's mean, kind of crazy. You know, considering the NBA for many, many, many years has been the Christmas, you know, league right there. You know, there's very few years that football's on Christmas. So, I think the deficit is just shocking in general. Because now, you know, I feel that, you know, again, Christmas Day falls on a Monday next year. Now, I think if you're the NFL, you've got to put football on Christmas Day again. I would say you have to put three matchups on. I feel like it's tougher to do when it's Monday night compared to Sunday. But everybody's home. That's the biggest thing, you know. Um I'm not saying it needs to be a big production like Thanksgiving, you know, where it's, you know, Cowboys and Lions, you know, we sign up to watch them lose. But it needs to be, you know, and it makes me wonder too because, you know, at the beginning of the year, my prediction was the Chiefs and the Bills on Christmas Day, if you recall. Mm -hmm. Um, It makes me wonder if we had the high-quality matchups like that, would we have seen a bigger gap now? You know, because I think it would have pushed the views to 25 plus million. I mean, this gap is already an embarrassment to the NBA. I mean, this would have just, you know, to me, it wouldn't have ended NBA Christmas. What it would have done is put it on the back burner, you know, like, you know, put it six feet under, you know. I will say this now. Say it was like three really, really good games on Christmas Day. Yeah, it definitely would have been even more of a landslide. See, and it shows the only thing, and if there's a lesson learned here, and no offense to the NBA, but the lesson learned here is that the only thing that competes with football is the World Series. Because if you look at the ratings of the World Series and the NFL on the days where they collide, the World Series sometimes outmatches the NFL in viewership. So, 
Um, again, you know, it's not for lack of trying because the NBA did put on some good matchups on Christmas Day. It's unfortunate that football has a much bigger following. So, with that, let's lead into the picks here. Um, so, we begin with the Cardinals and the Falcons. Um, Falcons favored by five and a half. Yeah. Um, yeah, what, Desmond Riddler and then McSorley, right? Yeah. So, doesn't seem like a very great game to have to um, choose between, but I'm probably going to go with Desmond Ritter. I think he's going to finally get his um, first win as a as a starter against uh, McSorley. So. I think you got to go Atlanta here. Um, McSorley doesn't look too great, so... Um, moving on though, cause, um, we got the Bears and the Lions, Lions favored by six. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be a game for the Lions, but don't be shocked if Justin Fields goes off against Detroit again, like he did the first matchup. Lions, I think they're on the right track now. They, they are trying hard to make it to the playoffs. Um, Broncos, Chiefs, I mean, and I... Just Chiefs. I, I think we gotta just admit that at this point. As much as it would be nice to see the Broncos win, and I mean, look how close it was the first matchup between these two teams. Hmm. Um, it, it would be nice, but there, there's no way the Chiefs are losing at home. No Hackett either, by the way. And this is the one news story we forgot. Na uh, Nathaniel Hackett was, uh, or Nathaniel Hackett was fired. This week. Um, so, who knows? It, it might make a difference. I think the difference is quarterback-wise, but I digress because we don't have much time. Um, Dolphins, Patriots, Patriots favored by two and a half. Yeah. I would say if it was Tua, maybe the Dolphins, but since it's mm -hmm. Teddy Bridgewater, I'm going to have to go with New England at home. Yeah, of course, to a back in the concussion protocol. I'm going to go with the Patriots, unfortunately. It's been quite a downward slide for the Dolphins the last few weeks, and I think it won't stop here. Um, Colts, Giants, Giants favored by five and a half. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the Giants. The Colts are just not that good right now, and they just can't get their quarterback situation under helm and it's definitely gonna show up here it's gonna get worse before it gets better giants win so um saints eagles eagles favored by five and a half yeah i'm gonna have to go to the eagles at home mm -hmm. i don't care if it's it don't J um, i don't care if it's Jalen hurt or if it's gardner Minshew. both quarterbacks are showing that they can succeed in this offense so like I said, Minshew's stock is rising. Eagles win. So, Panthers, Bucks. Bucks favored by four. Yeah, in a game that the Carolina Panthers have to win to the, the, the win, I, I think potentially win the division too. So, um, God. I'm going to say, I'm going to, I might just go with the upset. I I might go with the Panthers over the Bucks here. I don't know. I mean, I I want to say that, but I think I'm going to go with the Bucks here. I think they'll get the job done this time. Um, Browns Commanders Commanders are back to uh, Carson Wentz at quarterback, and they're favored by two. be honest, I mean, Browns haven't looked too bad with uh, Deshaun Watson at quarterback. But, um, I might just have to go with the Commanders here, but I wouldn't be shocked if it ends up being Cleveland. I'm going to go with the Commanders here. Um, just barely. I think by a field goal or less. 
Um, so Jaguars, Texans, Jags favored by three. I mean, they're being very generous here. I mean, yeah, the, the Texans have been in it and been holding true to you know every game that they've played, but it's it's going to be the Jags here, and they're going to make a strong case of winning that division this year. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, Jags, no question. Um, Raiders, Forty Niners. I mean, uh, no th- car means the 49ers are going to have a um, hell of a day against the Raiders. Wouldn't the defense is going to be a Jared Stidham's day, a living nightmare. Wouldn't matter to me if it was Derek Carr, not 49ers win. Um, Seahawks and Jets. Geno Smith goes up against his old team, and the Jets are favored by a point and a half. I don't like that. I'm going to have to go with Seattle. I think Geno Smith is going to uh, still show that he's on this revenge tour and he's going to really show his former team you made. Uh, if you had a little bit more, um, if you, did you just, if, if, if Seattle go, you know, G, Geno Smith, who is now a you know, first time pro bowler and having himself a really great career year with almost 4,000 passing yards, which is insane. Um, for a quarterback that I didn't even think was going to do so well this year. I thought they'd be in the battle for the number one pick. But I, I don't know. I'm um, going gonna, gonna to go with... Wait, sorry, did you make your pick all right? Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Seattle. I, I think Geno Smith is going to um, finish off the revenge tour with a win. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Jets. The Jets need the win to stay alive. And Mike White is going to be starting, Mike too. Mike White's back. I think that's going to give all new energy to this team because they definitely rally around him. So, that said, with the Dolphins lost, too, this could put the Jets right back in the picture, and it's going to be a battle going into Week 18. Um, and I think that's what we're going to set up for. Um, and that said, that could very well... Now, the Jets next week... I was going to say, if Jets win this game and Miami loses, that game is going to be potentially potentially if they make the playoffs or not. That game will get flexed. I guarantee you it will get flexed to one of the Saturday games, if not the Sunday night game. It probably Um, will, but who knows. If that all plays out, of course. Um, But Vikings-Packers, and the Packers are favored by three. Uh, I mean, I don't even care. I, I don't like that. I don't care if they are the home team. Yeah, the Packers have been looking really good and finished off another perfect December under Matt LaFleur. But the Vikings, it is something about the Vikings this year that just make them out to be, you know, a very almost legitimate threat. So I, I, I'm going to say the Vikings on the road here. Hmm. I got to go Vikings. They're, they're going to put the final nail in the coffin for Aaron Rodgers and the Packers this year. Um, but here we go. The game that was supposed to be the Sunday night game has now been flexed to 425. Rams, Chargers, the battle for SoFi. Chargers are six and a half point favorites. I'm going to have to go with the Chargers. Sorry, Baker, but... But then again, I, I can't disc- discredit the Rams either. I mean... I think this is going to be a battle, but I, I will say ultimately I think it's going to be the Chargers that beat the Rams. Chargers by three. Something tells me Baker, Cam Akers, and Tyler Higby are all going to keep them alive here. So, I'm not ruling that out. Um, Steelers, Ravens, and if you wanted to know how bad the Steelers were, the Ravens are favored by two, even with Tyler Huntley getting another start this week. Lamar is still hurt. Yes, he is. He hasn't practiced yet. Yeah, I I think the Ravens get the win, but then again, who knows? Really, there's no rush to get him back. I mean, yeah, you're battling for the division, but 
I mean, I'm going to go with the upset, though. I think the Steelers pull this one out. Yeah, you know what? No, I'm going to still go with the Ravens because the Steelers, yeah, they beat the Raiders last week in the immaculate, mm. in the 50 year immaculate reception game, but how much of it was that of, you know, you know, battling, and how much of that was, you know, well, they just got a lucky win. I, I think they just got a lucky win against the Raiders, and I think this one, they're not going to get so lucky. Mm. Yeah, so. Uh, moving on to Monday Night Football, the matchup I think that's going to be the best one of the week. Bills, Bengals, and Bills are favored by a point and a half. I, I, this is going to be a dogfight game. I, I, I've been saying it a lot for these kind of games that are, you know, great games, but this is going to be a dogfight game. Um, ultimately, I, I think Buffalo's defense is going to make Burrow's day kind of hell because Buffalo's defense has kept the Bills in a lot of these games and helped them win a lot of these games this year. Um, plus, Buffalo is 11-0 when Poyer plays, so I, I think they're going to keep it up. I would say, yes, one and a half is a great, reasonable thing. I, I think it's actually going to be a game-winning. I, I think it's going to come off of a, a field goal. Um, I, I'm thinking maybe 34-31 Buffalo for the Cincinnati Bengals here. Patrick Mahomes gets all the attention, but I would say Joe Burrow's like flying under the radar, too, for the MVP discussion. Um, but, you know... This is a game that, you know, the Bills cannot afford to lose. Um, no, they, they lose cannot. this, they lose the number one seed. There's no question here. The number one seed is, okay, because there's no way that the Chiefs are going to lose in the final two weeks because they play the Raiders next week. So, right, this is a game that the Bills, I'm sorry, they got to have it. And oh. they're in luck because Joe Burrow... And the Bengals did not look entirely good last week. Mm -hmm. So, I think they got a shot. I think it's going to be a close game. And I think the Bills just barely pulled this one out. Yeah. I'd, right. It's going to be a tough one, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but that said, that's it for our picks. Let's go on to Tinkle on this um, real quick, and it involves Luka Doncic, so I'll uh, let you take it over here. All right, so if anybody has uh, has really watched that game, so Luka was at the free throw line. Um, he hits, the, I want to say, the first one, or and then he intentionally misses the second one, bounces off the rim, they're fighting for the ball. Luca gets it, just throws up the shot, makes it, and then he's he, he's dancing like, oh shoot, you know, I just got the game winner here. I I, I think I got this. You know, he thought he thought he won the game off of that. Uh, unfortunately, Luca, it was actually the game tying shot to the be to make it one fifteen even heading into overtime. So for that, Luca, unfortunately, tinkle on this. Um, yeah, it was a good thought and a good practice. You know, yeah, you thought you won the game, but ultimately, mm. kind of made you look like an idiot no. dancing like that because everybody's like, "Oh, Luca, it, it, it's it's tied. We, we didn't win the game." <laughs> you know, yeah, you got the game tying shot, but we didn't win the game. So you're kind of like dancing like an idiot out there. Talk it was, about it was, lack it was, of awareness. It was, it was hilarious to see, but he he, he didn't realize until shortly afterwards mm. that, oh, shoot, no, we're going to overtime. We didn't win yeah. the game. Would have been worse as if there was still time on the clock. 
and then it would be more like a one yard line situation where you drop the ball before you cross the um, end zone, you know, into the end zone there. So luckily it wasn't that, but you know, close enough, and that's enough for Tinkle on this to open up the brand new year. Um, so with that, we don't have much time. I just want to say real quick, we will have our picks on Saturdays for the next few weeks because round um, week 18 we have two Saturday games. Um, you know, the first round of the playoffs will have a few Saturday games. And then the second round of the playoffs, I believe we have two Saturday games. So, I think so yeah. Because of that, the next three weeks, Sunday morning tinkle, we'll have our picks on Saturday and then the show on Sunday. So we got a few busy weekends coming up. Just want to get that across. Of course, the picks on Saturday will be on YouTube only. So do not look on the audio platforms. You will not find our picks. You have to go to YouTube to go find them and search Tinkle Sports and Entertainment. Um, so that's where they will be. Um, Jason, before we go, what's coming up this week on No Final Bell? Um, I mean, I, I haven't watched uh, Dynamite and our Rampage, but uh, it, it's New Year's Smash, and we we got a couple you know title matches to look forward to. Um, Smojo and Wardlow, and, uh, and a couple other matches, so definitely look out for uh, No Final Bell as we'll discuss all those title matches and all the matches that have happened for New Year's Smash, for Dynamite and Rampage. Alright, yeah, tune in Wednesday at 5 for that. Um, you know, we'll be back here Saturday at 9 a.m. with our picks. So we hope to see you then. Happy New Year, everybody. Hope the hangover's wearing off real quick. Um, <laughs> and we'll see you back here next Sunday for another round of Sunday Morning Tinkle in 2023. Till then, bye everyone. <laughs>